Hello, my name is Sarah Morgan, and for this past year, I have been the art teacher at John Rex Elementary, which is the uh, charter school in downtown Oklahoma City. Very unique place. I think there's really no place like it. Uh, we serve a really diverse student body. We have uh, kids from all different, you know, socioeconomic backgrounds, cultural, nationality, um, just lots and lots of different um, people coming together. And it's a really wonderful place to be. I serve over 400 students a week. Um, and we have had a really great year so far. We've done everything from weaving, which has been a really big hit, lots of drawing, uh, some alternative paint methods. And I have learned so much this year and have really, really enjoyed working with that student body. And I'm so happy to continue to get to make art with them and uh, with the rest of the All Access Art students. And um, you are right now here in my studio. This is my home studio. I uh, do a little bit of everything. I've uh, predominantly trained as a metalsmith and a jeweler, and that's what I've worked in for about the past five years. But I also uh, paint. I do a lot of collage with paper. I uh, do a little bit of embroidery on fabric that's new. This is one of my pieces I'm wearing right now. Um, all the jewelry that I'm wearing is my work. Um, I'm also a printmaker. Let's see. I also do a little bit of clay. These are some new clay pieces I'm working on. I do some beading. I love it all. I really do. I love art. I love materials. Uh, both of my parents are makers and craftspeople. My mother is a paper artist. My father is a, a builder and a remodeler and a woodworker, uh, both really, really creative people and always really instilled in me just a love of things that were made by hand and things that were unique and special and had a little history and a little story behind them. Um, and for me, art is alchemy. I think it's magic. Uh, I just, I love, you know, getting a new material, learning how to work with it, kind of having to put that discipline in on the front end and then uh, getting to use that to take something that's just an idea, an abstract thought, and then using that raw material and my creativity to make something out of it. Like I now have a tactile object where there once was only an idea. So it, that just blows my mind, um, especially working with metals that really hit home with me, how you could take something that was just like a flat sheet of metal that was just nothing and you know, so many hours later and so much, you know, hours of skill later, you would end up with a piece, like a little object that had a little story and a little personality of its own. Uh, so that's what's really, that's what really motivates uh, my personal work. As far as, you know, what motivates my teaching is really just a love that with art, there really is no right or wrong. The art is so much about a personal experience and just enjoyment of the materials and kind of finding yourself and finding your voice. And that's what I really try to build my lesson plans around is, you know, showing examples and empowering the students with the discipline on the front end of how to work with their materials and just letting them go, seeing where their creativity takes them. Um, you know, my student body at John Rex is incredibly intelligent and incredibly informed and there's really not much I have to do to start a conversation with them on just about any topic. I can bring it up and they've got something to say. They have an opinion and they uh, have something to create about it too. So that's been really fun and I, gosh, I miss interacting with them and seeing what they make. Um, but they've really just taken off with you know my philosophy and taught me so much about myself and why I teach and why I love teaching. And it, for me, it's just, it's all about personal empowerment and confidence. Cause I think when you, you know, you start to create, you have your materials and you're like, okay, this is intimidating, but I can do it. I've learned how to work with this. Let me try this now. You know, you start to build confidence as the things you try. Maybe you fail sometimes you're like, okay, I've learned, I can move on. Maybe I messed up, but it actually looks kind of cool. Sometimes a mess up is a good thing, which is the other thing I love about art is that um, there's really no right or wrong answer to, you know, what we're doing. There's sometimes some process, processes together work better than others, but that learning process was part of your art. It was so important. It was, it's never time wasted working on yourself and working in creativity. And, um, 
I believe too, it's not only you know helpful for confidence, but also compassion. I think as we uh, teach children and empower them to know themselves and value themselves, uh, that starts to you know rub off on how they engage other people. You know, if I'm valuing myself and I know that I have something important to say and I have talent and I have skill, I can start to recognize that in others as well. And um, I think that all the educators at John Rex do a really great job of encouraging that and like encouraging cohesion where there is so much diversity and uh, it's a really beautiful thing. And as far as pivoting to uh, online, you know, what that's gonna look like, I'm definitely just gonna continue to create lesson plans I think that are fun and engaging. Uh, I try to pull things from a lot of different places. I really, really love science and I love nature and biology and history and global culture and just, you know, kind of engaging my lesson plans from those different places as well. Um, I'm really interested in STEAM kind of bringing that all together, STEAM and STEM. Anytime someone says STEM, I say STEAM because, you know, the A is the art. Um, but I really love that because it, for me, it's um, brought more students in. You know, when I first started teaching art, there's obviously there's always people that are more into it and people that are less into it. And that's OK. Not everybody has to be an artist when they grow up. Uh, but by engaging things like science and technology and history, um, I have way more students kind of, oh, oh, I like that. Oh, I know what that is. Oh, I have something to say about that. And then all of a sudden they're talking about the art, they're making their project, they're dialoguing with their fellow students about it, and they're into the artists, or they're into, you know, being artists, and they're into what they create. And so I'm going to definitely continue to do that. Um, going to really try to focus on projects that have uh, really simple materials, things that everybody, you know, not everybody, I will do my best to get as many people involved as possible, but that most people have around the house. Um, you know, not everybody is going to have everything and that's okay. Um, I try to make my projects really, really engaging too, so that if nothing else, if the student just wants to hang out and draw and watch while, you know, I work on something else on the video and some of their other friends are working on the project, that's so great too. I hope that everybody feels um, welcome to make with us no matter what they have access to and no matter what they want to do that day. I also want to really encourage siblings and grown-ups to get involved too. Please come make art with us. Uh, it's so much more fun when we can engage it together and talk about what we're doing and experiment together and maybe you'll discover a lost love of art as well. Um, and maybe come back to yourself a little bit too. Uh, we're going to be doing lots of drawing. So that's uh, so many great skills we can work on there. And you know, most of us hopefully can track down some paper and pencil. I know in my house, I can never find paper and pencil. So I don't, go figure. I'm an artist. I should have that right near me. Scissors too. I can never find scissors. But hopefully, you know, we'll all have enough to be able to make some work together. Um, I also want to encourage everyone to continue to be active and get outside and get some fresh air. So we'll be doing some nature inspired art. We'll go on some nature walks to gather materials. Uh, we're going to work on our breathing and our stretching because, you know, art is a very physical practice. So it's important that we take care of our bodies and that we take care of our breath so that we can stay engaged in our work. Um, and you know, to continue to try to improve my process in making these videos. I definitely want to stay in dialogue with all of my students and parents on what's working for them, what they need more of, what they need less of, um, ideas they have for projects, things that they like to do at home already that would make a great project to share with the rest of our friends. And um, yeah, it's a whole new world, but I'm so grateful to the Arts Council uh, and everyone there that set this up for us and just, you know, really reached out a hand and jumped into action and is taking care of the teaching artist and the student body, which is so important to continue to provide this refuge of art for everyone. Um, and, you know, we're going to make it work. We're going to have a great time. And I think that along the way that we will discover so many more things 
about ourselves. I, I know that I'm in for a lot of discovery and I cannot wait for it. So um, with that being said, how about a tour of some of my work? And I'll tell you a little bit about what I do and what motivates me. And yeah, I'm going to pause it and I'll take the phone down, flip it around. I'll see you in a second. All right, and we are back. So I'm going to start off with showing you some of my favorite uh, metals pieces that I have made over the past five years. Some of these I made in college. Um, what we're looking at now is a grouping of some of the metal objects that I made. Now I'm predominantly a jewelry maker, but in metal smithing, it's really great to also learn how to do um, forms to create, you know, little objects. Some people who are metal smiths make jewelry. Some of them make, you know, forms and objects, things like little bowls. Um, I like to do both. Uh, I'll just give you a quick rundown on some of this stuff. This was actually, show you this one right here. This was the first little metal piece that I ever made. I love this little piece. I'm really proud of this. It is a little lidded box, has this little swirl cut out of it. I love swirls. My work deals a lot with things like um, natural form and cycles. I'm so sorry about this dog barking, my neighbor's dog, not mine. It's not gonna stop, so we're just gonna keep going. So I love natural um, forms and cycles. You think of like, you know, swirls of water, moon cycles, just kind of like the, the shapes that nature takes on in a repeated uh, fashion. And this is also got a little pearl. You see that a little bit better. A little pearl set inside of the piece. This has on it what's called a patina. This is copper. Copper is normally about this, well, here we go, here's some actual copper. Copper is normally this color when we first see it, yeah? But this is a process that you do. Patina will develop on copper over time anyway because it just oxidizes, that's what happens. Um, but you can also speed that up and change the color and control it a little bit with certain chemicals and heat. So really, really enjoyed that process. This was, I think, maybe the second metal piece I ever made. First really big piece to um, ignore the stuff in it. This is now my incense bowl. You see this has also got, can you see, a little swirl on it. The whole thing is kind of based on the swirl and planets. I apologize, I have to do this one hand. Um, you can ask the kids at John Rex, I love space and we talk about space quite a bit. That's that little piece. This has also got a process I do a lot. I'll show you more of this soon called acid etching. Really, really fun process. These um, were a project that's all about forging. So these started off as just copper wire and there's a way that you hammer them and kind of fold them, move them, twist them around and then I soldered on little, these are little pieces of brass pieces of brass that I made these little forms to. So many different things you can do with metal. Such a cool thing. So these were based on just kind of, you know, eating and like how we eat and the things that we choose to eat. And this one is, you know, kind of a snake. So it's an animal. And this one is more like a plant. So this is, you know, like fruits and vegetables. It's kind of questions on, you know, is there a way to eat things um, in a responsible manner? Does everything kind of have uh, price. Uh, this piece, this is my big piece. I love this piece. This is a little bowl. This has got a lid that comes on and off, but I can't get it on and off with one hand. So you're just going to have to see it like this. This uh, whole piece is copper. This is the same process that I use to make these little spiky forms I use to make these little guys. And it's also got that same kind of patina process on it. It's two different chemicals you use to make these two different colors. So this piece was all about kind of holding water and kind of have like these little sea barnacle looking guys on there and the preciousness of water. And then this is an incense holder. But the thing that's so cool about this, what I love about this is that this, this tall 
form here. Let me hold it up so you can really see it. This form right here started off as a flat sheet of metal. And this is a process that you, um, it's called raising, where you hammer the metal over a stake and you just start to kind of push the metal up all around and the metal will start to move and you can make the metal like, you know, thinner in some spots and then wider in other spots. It's metal is magic. It's so crazy. And again, we have the same patina process. I really enjoyed that piece. I don't really remember what this piece was about, but it was a lot of work. So I was pretty happy with it. This is a really fun process I learned. This is a really, really unique coloration process on metal. Um, that is actually a, like an oil-based paint that you seal onto the metal itself. So this is a really fun, this piece is actually brass and it's just kind of meant to mimic a leaf, but also space. Um, then we'll move on to jewelry. So this is, Kind of some of my older work and some of my current work, sorry about that. I do a lot of stone setting. I really, really like to take stones that are kind of funky shapes and you do, uh, this process is called bezel setting. So you build the bezel wall around the stone. This is another one. The non-traditional, I also like to cut these little forms. You'll see these little squiggle forms. In a lot of my work, I ask my students, we talk about squiggly lines all the time. Miss Morgan loves a squiggly line. This is some more squiggle line. These are brooches. A brooch is like a little pin. It's a fancy old fashioned word for a little pin. These again are based on just kind of natural shapes, flow of water, erosion, wind. Uh, someone told me they look like feet and I don't disagree. This too, little, it's kind of natural forms, a little squiggly line. I'm really into biomorphic forms and biology. This is actually from a series I did based on bighorn sheep skulls. This is a process, uh, this is the acid etching process. Really, really cool process. This is a ring. Um, but I can take an image and I can print it off and with a special paper transfer the printed ink onto metal with heat and then where that ink is becomes a resist. So I put the rest of the metal in a bath of acid and where the resist is not, the acid eats into the metal. So you have to do like a reverse image of what you want to be eaten into the metal and it just goes down a little bit. This is also the same process done for intaglio and printmaking, which is how I learned it. I took an intaglio printmaking class, but I'm a jeweler, so I started applying it to jewelry when I was in college and have been doing it ever since. These are some of my earrings. Bighorn sheep skulls, skin swirls. I love a swirl. Obviously, I love the moon. Who doesn't love the moon? Uh, again, natural cycles. I'm just really interested in natural cycles. So I do lots of moon phase things. It's another little moon phase thing. So some of my other pieces and my personal pieces that I love to wear. I'm gonna switch hands, I'll show you the other side. Again, non-traditional, just kind of funky little shape stone. This is pyrite, fool's gold. And this right here, this metal, this is a really cool metal called argentium. Argentium is silver. It's a type of silver. It just has a different alloy in it than like regular sterling silver. It's really neat. Um, you can actually get it to fuse to itself without using any solder. And if you're not familiar with what soldering is, um, that's your assignment. Look it up, solder. But uh, you don't have to add anything else to it to get it to stick to itself. So you can do some really, really cool fusing stuff with it. I made this whole ring. Um, and I think like four different parts. It's three different lines of argentium fused together and then I added these little argentium balls to them. So really fun. Love metal. Still working on that. I'll show you. I'm so behind on my making jewelry. <laughs> these are some more bighorn sheep schools. That's more acid etching. These are nice big pieces. This little hole right here, that will be for a stone. I will put a stone in that and it's another big piece. This will be a big pendant. Again, places for stones. 
This I hand cut out of a flat sheet of metal with a jeweler saw. And that can be a very tedious process. I'm trying to find my saw for you to show you what it looks like. Yes, so that's your jeweler saw. This is what it looks like. That's how thick the saw blade is. And yes, you break them all the time. All the time. And you saw this little guy. Put your piece right here. You hold it with one hand. And you have this little notch cut out. Sorry about the phone moving around. Right there. E e e e e. And you saw. And you saw and you saw and you saw. And these are some of my most popular series that I'm working on right now. This is my mountain and moon series. You can see I've got my moons. Do sterling moons and bronze moons. Sterling and bronze are probably my favorite metals to work with. I just love the color. Um, love bronze. It's so warm and pretty. But what happens is I will solder these little silver hoops down. I'll cut them out so they'll be their own piece and then I put a little moon up in there somewhere. So each one is different and it is to mimic the moon rising over the mountains. I, um, a couple years ago, was living in Colorado and my parents actually own a shop in Georgetown, Colorado. If you ever go to Georgetown, Colorado, you have to go to Georgetown jerky and get some some really good gourmet beef jerky um, But they were living up in this beautiful mountain town in a gorge So it had uh, you know mountains on all four sides and I would stay with them and watch the mountain rise over Or I'm sorry watch the moon rise, rise over the mountain and was really inspired and I've been making that series for about two years now It's a great series. All right moving on to Two-dimensional work. So friends, here we go. Three-dimensional. Get it? It's got a uh, height, <laughs> length, and depth. That's our third dimension, right? We've been talking about this. Now, two-dimensional, but this is kind of interesting because this does have a little depth to it. So we can debate, is this 2D or 3D? We can talk about it. So here is some of my two-dimensional work. It's a little all over the place, but you can see some squiggly lines. Uh, these, I basically call them abstracted biomorphic forms. And I, that's kind of a mouthful, but I don't really know how else to refer to them. Uh, but again, natural cycles, the shapes that, you know, things in nature take. And um, I've just kind of always been fascinated with how, you know, a, a you know, things in space look similar to things in, uh, you know, on earth and in the body and just kind of that repetition of biology. Uh, these are some works in process. I'm in the same vein. I really love hands and eyes, obviously. So all about that hand-eye coordination. Some more work. And sometimes I just, you know, will sit down at something like this and I just start. I don't really have a plan in some of these pieces. I just do what feels good. So that for me is, these are way more about art therapy than anything else. And yeah, this. I love collage. I'm really, really into collage. Uh, when I was young growing up, I loved art, but I didn't have a lot of opportunity to take art classes. Uh, so I, I wasn't really strong at things like drawing and painting just yet, but I could cut. So I love to get into, you know, any cool magazine I could find. Uh, this is actually wallpaper from an old wallpaper book of discontinued patterns. You know, whatever I could get into. I loved layering images. You know, I started to do painting backgrounds and layering images on top of that. And I just, I love being able to change, you know, the context of something or you know kind of the meaning of something depending on what I put with it so this is just kind of a fun sweet piece this was a nice exercise to take me back into collage and we're gonna swing around the room I'll give you a broad view of the artist studio this is the cleanest you'll ever see it uh, this is some work I'm exploring right now more collage this is a fun process, friends. We're gonna do this. This is marbling on paper 
using shaving cream and food coloring. I think with this one I actually use liquid watercolor, but food coloring does the same thing. So fun. And then I folded it and cut this out. And didn't cut it out with the intention of making it look like bones, but it did, so I went with it. Having a lot of fun with that. Um, behind that, this is my Georgia O'Keeffe master copy from college. Pretty proud of this. It's mostly just out because I need to frame it. And I'll never frame it if it's not out, but fun. Master copy means that you copy a master. And I had a lot of fun with that piece. That piece gave me a lot of confidence to keep going. Uh, these are some nature studies I've been working on. When I moved back to Oklahoma about two years ago, I uh, was just so happy to be home and to be at peace and to have my home that I would sit out in my backyard and just draw grass and draw all the weeds and I started painting the weeds and the grass and that's been a really fun exploration. This is really like my most current two-dimensional stuff. Well, it's still kind of three-dimensional. Uh, this is what I'm exploring right now. It's these kind of still liquidy forms, really interested in crystals, squiggly stuff, got hands. And then this, this series really started here. Just again, enjoying, you know, this is a really cool coloration on paper process that is top secret. Uh, love this though, I'm incorporating this a lot. And it's got some paint and some drawing with it. And just kind of, you know, taking inspiration from space, from nature. Also from things like map making. Um, I really, I love maps, I love topographical maps. And I really love things too, like brain maps and, uh, biology and neurological networks and just again like how biology is mimicking itself and repeating itself in a lot of different forms and I'll wrap it up here to show you a few more pieces all in the same vein different things happening there lots of layers of different paper I'd like to do painting and drawing really proud of this piece. This was a lot of fun. Just had fun. So I think that about wraps it up for me, friends. I had a really, really great time sharing my studio with you and some of my practices. I am working on some art videos for you right now, and those will be posted very, very, very soon. And, um, if you have any questions for me, or if you would like to get in contact with me, uh, those of you at John Rex, you have my email address, and otherwise you can get in contact with the Arts Council. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, yeah, with the Arts Council, and they will get back in contact with me. Okay, thank you so much, friends. Take care. Bye-bye.